All right, good evening. We will call the Summersworth Historic District Commission for Wednesday, May 22nd to order. First on the agenda, approval of minutes from meeting April 24th, 2024. Do we have any edits or comments about the meeting minutes? All right, seeing no comments or edits to the meeting minutes, do we have a motion? I saw um, Richard first. I'll make a motion to accept them. All right. We have a motion to accept. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report. Michelle. Yes, thank you. Uh, the first on minimal impact report was 98 High Street in the residential business district. Uh, it was an application for in-kind roof repairs and that was approved and 53 Prospect Street in the residential single family uh, A district with historic overlay. It was application for in-kind repairs uh, to the portico roof, uh, freezer boards, siding fascia, windowsills and trim was approved. Thank you. Next on the agenda, at this time, we will open up to comments by visitors. If any visitors would like to come up and make a comment, please do so at this time. I know there's a mad rush, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to old business. Any old business to come before the commission tonight? All right, seeing that there is none, we will move on to new business. And we have quite a lengthy agenda tonight, so bear with us. First on the agenda, we have Daniel Brown is seeking our certificate of appropriateness to install a fence on a property located at 3 Emory Street. Michelle. Yes, thank you. The applicant is requesting to install a cedar picket fence and 30 feet of horizontal fence constructed of 11 by 4 rough saw boards. Uh, it should have been included in your packet what that is going to look like. And this application is complete. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Do we have an applicant who would like to give us any further information on this? Okay. And we'll just have you state your name. Just make sure the little green light is on. The green light's on. Perfect. Dan Brown. Right. Uh, Anything else you would like to add to the background? Um, I don't know what else you need. <laughs> well, we can open it up to well, questions. What and would help? Well, if you don't want to add anything specific, we can open it up to questions and if they'll ask you if we have any. Okay. All right. We'll open it up to the board for questions, comments, or concerns. <laughs> Richard? So I, I see the application sounds like it's going to be a picket fence about four feet in height, except for another section that's. Yeah, the back. There was an old woodshed there. Yeah. Sort of I, a half roof type of thing. I, I recall seeing it. It's kind of been leaning further and further. Been, over yeah, it fell. It kind of fallen over like that pretty much when I bought the house. Um, and my plan was to fix it this spring, but it was just a mess. So I took the whole thing down. And I figured that fence, uh, there's photos somewhere um, of what I thought would look pretty good there. Talked to the neighbors. They were fine with it. Um, if I can't do that, just tell me what I can do. And then the picket fence, I thought would kind of be a no-brainer, just kind of running up the road to look good. There used to be hedges there. Um, the hedges in the back, that uh, bittersweet vine, just destroyed all of that. And the hedges along the main road are all dead now because of the salt. So there's nothing there. So is there going to be any kind of roof structure again for storing wood? No, or is it that's it. Just, just, just a fence. I clean, like I said, I took it all down. I cleaned it up. It was all a lot of trash in there and, and old wood that was there, um, just kind of leftover stuff. And the vine literally was holding the whole thing up. So that's all gone. Both neighbors, the folks that actually own that little bit of road, sent me a text said thanks for cleaning it up. And the the woman lives behind me. Um, she also said thanks as well. So. And they both said they were fine with the fence. Okay. Um, just for clarity, when this was being reviewed for minimal, the picket fence would have passed minimal as a third open, but it was this um, back piece that is the horizontal part, which is the only reason it came before the and commission. And that can be adjusted to whatever, whatever you need. Or that could be picket, or, you know, whatever. I'm easy. Adam. 
Um, I'm just seeing there's definitely two different styles of fence. Are they both going to be the same material? One I already have. It's cedar. Um, they were, Home Depot was pretty much giving it away last year, so I bought it anyway. Um, and the, the other is going to be, uh, like I said, Home Depot's got rough, so rough sawn. I think it's pine. Okay. So. Will it all be painted the same color when it, everything's up? I'm going to stain it gray. It'll match the house. Cool. Yeah. So it'll all look uniform once yeah, everything's oh yeah, up. Oh, yeah. Okay. It'll cool. look good. What am awesome. I Liz? I just want to note that the, um, the par portion of the fence that's closed is not actually on the front of the house. So I think it's within, uh, to me, it appears to be within what's allowed <clears throat> in the regulation. Yeah, it's on the side. Mm -hmm. I would just. Um, the posts on that, were you planning on putting the posts on the, on the property side and the, yes. yeah. Tim, I think I saw your hand. It, yeah. Um, hey, Dan, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, we almost grew up together practically. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. why. Um, <laughs> the fence that you have that is a sample, which is probably a, from Florida, I'm guessing, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Um, that was the, the best uh, thing I could find of the idea that Is I that had. the product you, you're you representing that you're going to use? Or this is a... That looks like it's all pressure treated. Well, it's not. This example is the same same species as pressure treated, just never was treated. Yeah. This, is, this here is um, southern yellow pine, which is a fairly durable wood, but it becomes more durable if it's pressure treated and I'm just asking are you intending to do that piece of fence and pressure treated I wasn't I can't. wasn't if that makes a difference I'll it, do it, in pressure it, it, no it would would be I figured it would look it'd a be little more, more appropriate rustic. if it wasn't well yeah and that's what I thought too I'm trying to keep with the the house is kind <coughs> of cake style and I'm, I'm probably not opposed to this application um, I kind of wish all the fence was the same and like I said, I could do it if that makes a difference. If the picket I'll do it could just continue, it would be, to me, more of a match. But um, I'll, I'll let others discuss that. The idea was I've got a small camper and a boat and then a little utility trailer that I kind of park back there. So it's just trying to cover that up yeah. and just have a little privacy in there. That's why I was going with that right. fence. Yeah. I mean, I could do... A, picket that's got smaller gaps too would be the same thing that works yeah and I will tell you I am in agreement with Liz I like the picket fence at the front I believe that is very appropriate for the area I have no problem with the more privacy that this other one does because it is on the side and like you said we can kind of see that you have other things that maybe you want a little more privacy for um, and the fact that it's not on the main lawn at the front of the house I'd be okay with this I'm in agreement that you're going to stain it the same um you'll probably be happy you have some gaps in there for airflow so it doesn't just get <laughs> thrown over which i see a lot of privacy fences happen so um, that's just me personally but paul did i see your hand uh you essentially just said exactly what i was going to say was i felt that um the privacy fence was appropriate in this context so i'm comfortable approving this any other comments, questions, concerns, or do we have any motions? Paul. I make a motion to approve the application. All right, we have a motion to approve as um, presented. Do we have a second? We have a second by Adam. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Your motion passes. Awesome, right. thank you very thank much. You. All right, next on the agenda, we have Maria Ayer is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a fence on a property located at 50 Maple Street. Michelle. Yes, thank you. The applicant is requesting to install a new cedar fencing. The fencing between the house and the garage will be four feet in height with a halo added to the gate. The fencing between the garage and the property will be six feet in height with a halo added to the gate. Uh, included in your packet was uh, a description of what this is going to look like and uh, this application is uh, complete and ready for uh, review all right thank you do we have an applicant who would like to talk about this project 
All right. Um, we'll have you come up. Yeah. Only if we have questions. If you don't need to add anything, that's fine. And I'll just have you state your name for the record. I'm Maria Ayer. Okay. Simon Holling. Okay, perfect. All right. Do we have any questions or comments or concerns for this applicant? Um, I'll just say um, this almost went as minimal, but it was the added halos because I understand that this is going to be the same height as the, your current fencing. Is that correct? There is no fencing currently where the four foot is. Okay. So then there was a small addition, obviously, then. If you have a fence now, but you're adding a little bit where the four foot is? No. Am I There's saying that wrong? Very metal fence because we have children and dogs running okay. around, so we're trying to kind of seal it all in. Okay. Um, the six foot is falling down in horrible disrepair, so we want to just kind of keep it uniform with the halos. I thought it was a nice upgrade. Mm -hmm. All right, but this doesn't go over the six foot you have currently. What you're proposing? Did you say you have oh, a six including foot? Including the halo, it would yes. be over six feet. But at least for the not the halo part, the actual fence. No. Okay. Tim. Just to add for your clarity, the the fence company's proposal has the diagram with the six feet tall at twenty three feet long, four foot tall at thirty six feet of it. Um, I believe is that what you're planning? Is that it? Those dimensions correct? Yeah. Sounds about, about right. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I support this project. I'd be to vote right this second. I'd be in favor. Okay. Paul? Just a quick cl clarification on the diagram. Um, the fence is running perpendicular to Maple Street. Is that right? Emory. Yes. Oh, perpen yes. Ma Maple's Parallel. here. Yeah, it's on Emory. Yeah, Maple's page left of our diagram. Okay. Okay. This is, this okay. Would be Great. Memory. All right. Yes. Got it. Uh, I'll, I'm also in favor. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other comments, questions, or concerns? Or any motions? A motion to approve as submitted. All right. We have a motion to approve as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Richard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. The motion passes. Any things? M Madam Chair. Yes. May I ask the chair to suspend the meeting oh, for hold. about five minutes? Yes. Hold yeah. on. Uh, we actually do. Um, we are going to suspend the meeting for just a minute because we do have a question for Maria Ayer. Um, Which is <laughs> off, off topic for the Historic District Commission meeting. So if the person recording would suspend, uh, we have a private. guys uh, just so you see that uh, the application is complete and the board can start discussion all right is there anything else you wanted to add to what Michelle let us know about the project not really it's all right pretty straightforward okay all right I will open it up to the board for questions comments and um, at this time I'm actually asking since these are very similar that the board consider all three of these at the same time as long as there is no issue with that, if there is an issue, please state that as an issue. I was actually going to motion that we combine five uh, C, five D, and five E as <clears throat> one review, but it'll be three different because they're all identical homes and all identical. Everything's the same, so let's not rehear three different cases. So that's my motion. All right. We so we have a motion, Richard. I'll, I'll second that, but I was just going to add a little discussion as well. Um, obviously, there's four houses on this street. This is three of those four. Um, the one odd one that they don't own has actually been sided over, and 
you know, covered up siding and stuff. And Actually, before we get too deep in your conversation, let's do the vote, and then I will come right back yeah, to you for enough. conversation. All right. So all those in favor of hearing these three applications as one, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing there is none, we will move forward, and we'll go right back to you, Richard, for discussion. Yeah. So, you know, interesting, the surveys are exactly the same because they're so much the same building. The only outlier is that one odd one of the four that apparently they don't own um, which is even though the survey lists everything the same I think they kind of made an error in not representing what these have kind of rid it off the first one that is the odd one with the siding hid by the siding I mean the trim hidden by the side and I just noticed that and it seems to be an error in the surveys you know it's like they took they have so much the same they just wrote the same survey for all four but yet they kind of mentioned that it's hiding the trim but these three don't actually hide the trim so it's just an interesting catch that I noticed on this um, but yeah they are very much the same and I don't see why discussing them individually would be needed did you have a comment around that so I have a question okay is the home the northernmost on Elm Street is the one that is has vinyl siding. Mm -hmm. Was that vinyl siding applied? Can you step up to the podium near the microphone? The northernmost home on Elm Street, the one that uh, is currently vinyl sided, it's green. Mm -hmm. Is the vinyl siding applied in accordance with the approved application, or was that an omission? Or it, I I believe that was applied before the historic district was in effect. So yeah. it it was prior to the existence of the historic district. And you know, it's it's kind of a representation of what the historic district strives to prevent, if you ask me, because when you start covering all the trim with the vinyl siding, you take away the character that it has. And I think that's part of the reason vinyl siding gets a bad rap. I'm not saying vinyl can't be used. That's up for discussion, that obviously be discussed, but you know, it, it just when you when you look at the different siding projects that have been done, some are done very well, they keep the siding keep the trim exposed and the J channel plays into this some too you know there's, there's a lot of discussion to this you know there's there's definitely horrible jobs out there and there's very well done jobs out there it, you know and I'm sure everybody has their own opinion on that but the historic district strives to keep that character in existence by not mm -hmm. hiding the trim and the distinguishing features that many of these houses have so just a little background on that if that helps Paul. So yes, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, question on: I have always assumed, and I guess this is not our purview, but like, it, is this uh, is the existing siding going to remain on, and you're just covering it, or you're removing the siding that's there? We're just gonna cover the uh, existing siding. Okay, so you're so the whole envelope of this building is gonna get thicker. So all of the trim pieces, all the windows, all the doors are gonna be whatever, however thick the assembly is for the vinyl. Uh, are you planning to put on any new trim around windows or doors? Just J channel. So I guess my inclination is that these buildings, while not grand, are um, to me a very significant part of the city's history insofar as they represent the mill housing and the mill city that we are. Um, and they are some of the, the last sort of typical mill houses that we have that were not uh, removed during urban renewal. Um, so while they don't look great now, I would not want to see a, a quick uh, vinyl job on them either. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the, how, how one manages um, the interest of trying to get them updated, um, but also not do something that we're going to regret. Yes. Uh, my name is Silas Moylan. I live in the neighborhood with men, we are adjacent property owners. And um, as I understand it, the existing siding that is displayed now is also not original to the building and probably represented a, um, a budget option for the previous property owner when what I presume was the wood siding was covered. Um, and although the northernmost building with the green siding doesn't look historical, 
I don't think that the uh, fiber siding that's in place is representative of a significant historic period in Summersworth. I think that was probably applied at a time that was post um, post industrial history here, and and was a like I said a budget option then. As a local property owner, I think that a clean siding would look better than an unpainted fibrous siding, and that's my opinion. Um, so before we go too much further, I just need to understand, I understand you're representing the property owner and you're representing because you're doing the work. I'm just trying to, or are you just in a butter here to talk about the property? I'm just in a butter and an associate of men. Okay, so I actually will have you talk as an abutter and not answer the questions to the board to the property owner. Sorry, that is a little bit of a clarification. So um, I can have you come up after we do questions to have your statement as an abutter. Come. No, I, we want to hear what is a, a, an abutter has to say. We definitely want to hear your take on it, but we need the property owner to be the one to answer about the property. So just for clarification purposes. Right. Yes. Are you an abutter of these properties? Yes. Yeah. Or are you in a butter of Min? I live at number 123 Main Street, so Min's properties on Main Street abut me adjacent, and the properties on Elm Street are I'll my abut back abut. So you do abut the main the Elm Street properties? Yes. Okay. We're separated by the privately owned lane back there. And yeah. that's fine. Like I said, we do want to hear from abutters. We definitely want your opinion. So we can either keep going with questions and have you come back up, or we can pause now and have an abutter give your opinion about this project. But we just need you to talk about the actual project as the property owner, if that makes sense. All right. So do we have a preference, Paul? I know I kind of interrupted your question. Um, so. I, I wasn't. Uh, I was more just going to respond in general terms, not necessarily where I need feedback. But you know, my. My, to build on that, I don't disagree with, with the statement that, that this siding is not original. It's probably from the 40s or 50s or uh, early 60s. I would guess it's asbestos containing, just looking at it. Um, so, you know, I get the inclination to want to cover it uh, and given the budget constraints. Uh, do I like that? No. Um, do I get it? Yes. Uh, I'm concerned that without a more thought out plan to cover this thoughtfully, that it's going to look less, uh, we're, not, we're, not doing, we're not doing anything other than, and then putting a Band-Aid on something that's already not great, right? So like, I just want, I, I'm not against vinyl necessarily, but I'm against vinyl that is installed without thought, like without being very thoughtful around the detailing. So I'm thinking around windows, around doors, I'd want to. I'd want to see you be thinking through and how to either enhance the historical features or character, or um, at minimum not diminish them further. And I think, as proposed, it would do that. All right. So at this time, I think I'd like to hear from the abutter. Do, is there any issue from the board with hearing from the abutter and then bringing the applicant back up to answer more questions? Uh, that that makes that's a sensible way to do this. Okay. So. Sorry to interrupt. I know there was great discussion here, but um, we'll have you um, state your name and then again, just for the record, and then just please tell us more about how you view this project as an abutter. My name is Silas Moylan and I own number 123 Main Street. Uh, and I view the proposed project as an improvement to the general appearances of the neighborhood. Right now, those three homes uh, need some kind of facelift. Um, be it a paint job or, or fresh siding would be my preference as an abutter and if I were the property owner. Um, Paul, I hear you're concerned that the additional depth of siding may uh, limit the depth of trim or make it look like the depth of trim is limited beyond the siding. I think that's a detail that would be perceived if you were up close from a street view. I think that a fresh siding around the existing trim the depth of those two would be less perceptible unless you were right up close. I also think that given the fact that one of the four properties is already cited, that we would approve these ones. All right, thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna piggyback on Paul's um, comment. I'm torn with this particular, because um, I'm 
in love with the mill housing. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to anything else when we've had conversations with the new Elm Street apartment buildings. These were a very big concern for me about how those were going to look with that um, building specifically because these are a great example of mill housing and we don't have that many in Somersworth and these are really good. Um, they have that same character. I'm not opposed to, like you said, there is one. I think we can do it in a way a good way if we end up going with the vinyl siding. My biggest concern, piggybacking Paul's conversation, is one of the pictures you did supply is it looks like these windows literally just had aluminum siding just kind of nailed over it. And my biggest concern with you just covering that with more vinyl without removing that and making sure is you're going to get so much moisture and issues behind it that it's going to cause more problems for you if you just cover this without removing and seeing what's there because i know you took this picture or um so you kind of understand like this is just aluminum that's been nailed on and there's gaps everywhere so if you just cover that you're going to have more moisture sneaking in behind because it's going to cause more problem so that's my biggest concern with these window surrounds and other casing surrounds is the proposal to cover the window surrounds or to go around the window surrounds? I thought just, just the siding, the, the building. And the J channel would be an around. around the window surrounds and the windows. Right, but my problem with just going around it, you're not doing this any favor, right? So if you do a J channel around it, that doesn't necessarily fix what's already there. So I'd like to understand is there any thought to removing that and doing a better job around that window? Um, to help with that problem because if you go around this or tuck it in you're allowing moisture basically from what i can tell from how this would have to be done even with the j channel around yes i think it is typical to apply j channel around existing trim and over existing siding yes but if you look at how this was done there's major gaps so if there's j channel stuff can still get back there even if the J channel is done perfectly. I just can't imagine that there's not gaps. This isn't pushing out places where I think you're gonna have a problem with the new stuff you put in with how this looks to me. I'm, I'm opening it up to the other board who might have a different opinion. I am just worried that I understand it's not part of your application, but I'm just worried about you spending all this money to do something that's gonna look great if it's done well, and then in two months, that could be having an issue and pulling away because of the window conditions as they are. So I will open it up. Um, I think I saw George first, and then we'll go from there. Uh, my biggest problem is uh, the windows with this aluminum on it. I mean, if you're gonna go up next to that casing with uh, J Channel, the, the, the windows are horrendous. JTO is is not going to cut it here. If I was to go with this application, I would say replace all of the trim around the window and use that uh, trim that you can slide the siding behind it. That would be the only way that I would I would go with this one. Uh, and these are the, the three remaining row houses. So these mean a great deal to the historic district. And uh, I would really hate to uh, to lose them if it were me. Uh, and I don't know what's underneath it, but I'm assuming probably regular uh, siding, wood, clapboard. I would take these off and see what's underneath it and, and paint the clapboard. Uh, my father's house looks similar to this, and they took the siding off it was clapboard and painted it it looks beautiful but i just can't see j channel around this is a this is a nightmare uh there's no metal going on the uh, uh trim of the eaves of the stoppets or anything it's just i just i just can't see it all right richard i saw you and then we'll do tim yeah. so the plan isn't to cover the trim currently it's just a side up to the trim. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know we had another house that came before us a year or two ago, maybe more time flies, that had a similar fiber board on it. And they actually chose to paint it because after, you know, after some discussion here, they realized that the nails going into it would actually break it up and fall apart because it's so brittle. Um, so I'm just wondering if you've considered 
repainting the trim and the siding rather than putting nails into it and busting it up into more pieces that likely the nails could do. I feel that putting a siding on will bring more value to the neighborhood versus just painting it like it is. Even if I've done, I've done the paint before and, and like it, I feel like it will make the neighborhood nicer and versus me just painting, I mean, chiseling everything off and then painting it again. It's still an eyesore, even if I were to paint it. So allow me to siding it will make it the neighborhood more presentable and livable. All right, Tim. Thank you. Um, have you read the our standards for review when you're applying for something within a district? We have a, a document that's available that you can look at and read. Did you happen to read that? So I'll point out section D in that standards for review discusses siding and particularly paragraph three. While the use of vinyl siding is discouraged within the commissions re within the district, the commission, us, realizes that there will be circumstances that may make it a reasonable choice of material in order to preserve the natural and quality contributing buildings as well as the overall quality of the neighborhood, such as you mentioned. And it has a few bullet points. Vinyl will have the same profile and exposure of the existing clapboards. Wood corner boards are to remain on the building. Soffit and window trims are to remain wood. All ornate details on the building are to be maintained. Shutters must be replaced with vinyl when vinyl siding is approved by the HDC, no J channel is to be used. Existing trim could be routed and slid underneath. J channel is not allowed in the district. So if you're just butting up against those window trim and have no plan on doing anything with that trim, which the trim is in really bad shape, um, there needs to be a different method there. Uh, maybe the window trim needs to be replaced with a material that allows the siding to hide and disappear behind that trim. But J channel is one of the things that we can't, it's, it's in our standards then. That's why when you mentioned all the J channel and you should provide the pictures of J channel, I, he couldn't have read, read a standards review because that's in it. So there's a casing J channel built in. I could remove the the trim around the window and have the casing replace the trim all together and and uh, slide the the siding would you prefer doing it that way there is a material that exactly as you suggest right now right and it's right. um I, I one of the things that, that i agree with paul what he said is what is the material what is the siding right now what is that material Plastic? What do I mean? The it's stuff on plastic. your house is right now. What is that stuff? What's the stuff you want to cover? What is that product? That's uh, ceramic. What do you mean? Is it ceramic? Is it asbestos siding? Is it cement board? Is it cement board? It's a cement. It's not asbestos. No. Are you sure of that? I mean, it's so old. I mean, the, my best guess would be ceramic. Tiles. Well, it wouldn't be ceramic. So one of the difficulties when siding, if it is asbestos, is attaching vinyl siding nails through that material. They crack and break and fall apart. That material that's on there now, most likely, like George said, because you can tell how the trim of the windows is fairly it's not very proud right now. It's almost flush with the siding that's there, which would mean that this siding was attached over the top of a siding that's underneath it. And your proposal is to now add a third layer, perhaps a fourth layer. You don't know what's behind there, um, but I'd be certain it's at least two layers on your building now. This will be the third layer. And I feel that that extra layer would be flush or even have your current window trim 
almost recessed, which would look even worse. And we don't allow J Channel. So, so some attention and some trim idea will, will has to be addressed for us to even consider the approval. I don't like vinyl siding in the historic district. I'd rather see that siding removed down to the clapboards and have those clapboards assessed. Maybe they are worthy to be painted or maybe side vinyl over the clapboard underneath this product. But we need to be very careful from an environmental standpoint. If it is asbestos and the paint that's on that siding now, is it lead paint? So there's a number of factors that no one's brought up that are very critical. It's a, it's a U.S. environmental law that that has to be tested before you do any work greater than 22 square feet. So you, we need you're going to need to know what that material is, and you're going to need to know what kind of paint that is, and just to do the project. But that's not our job here to decide that. It's talking about the siding. And covering over this, adding a third layer of siding is something I'm not really in favor of um, with no plan presented to us of how you're going to address those windows and the trim on those windows. So I need to, I would really need to see something on that trim for me to make a decision. Um, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on one of the questions Tim brought up. Um, you list that you have a contractor that is doing this work for you. Um, when he came out to give you a quote to put up the vinyl siding, was there any kind of conversation of, you know, if this siding starts breaking, what are you going to do, especially if it hasn't been tested to find out if it is asbestos? Because if it starts breaking, like Richard said, we had another applicant come before us and it was going, with the amount of nails that they have to use to do the vinyl siding, it started breaking up what was behind it. And so that starts falling, and that becomes an environmental problem and an asbestos cleanup, which is greatly um, costly because uh, it re requires remitigation. It's not just encapsulating. It's remitigation at that point. So I would be concerned that even if we allowed you to move forward with this, that you could end up with a very big fee on your hand because once this starts breaking up, it gets in the atmosphere, and they have to fully tent, and they have to extract it. So I would say that... I'd be more happy to have you come back and understand, like, yes, this is asbestos. No, this isn't. Like, it's a lead base. It's, there's no asbestos. Because even if we allowed it as it was presented today, I feel like we could be opening up a very bad bag of worms for you. And then we approve something that you can't even move forward with, if that makes sense. Um, I'm still of the mindset that I would, like what you said, where I wouldn't want the J channel, I'd want that trim addressed in a different way. I wouldn't want to see it stay with that, what looks like an aluminum wrap there right now. I'd rather see it covered with the same siding so it fits behind correctly. Um, but again, I think that would be a conversation with the contractor to understand if that can be done. Yeah, like I, I discover a, a, a case, uh, trim that they could use instead of we can just remove the 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 wood siding the wood um trim and then it will, it will replace it and then we'll yeah and it all fits behind it I, it and so you wouldn't have to do the j channel i'd be more amenable to that than keeping it as you have it today okay. but again i feel like i'm hesitant to even rule on this just because there's so many factors if you go into this and it turns out like that this starts breaking apart on you then you're going to have a w wider problem. But I'm curious what other board members feel like. Are you, before I, I'll ask this one last question before I open it up to anybody else. Um, if we say, hey, go back, test this, it should be a very simple test to go, it's asbestos or it's not, or it's lead. There's very simple test kits to do this, which is not very costly at all. And then come back with that information before we move forward and maybe pulling off a little bit of that um, casing the wrapped aluminum to see what's amenable to do around the windows for this siding. Those would be the two things I'd probably want answered if that would be something you're amenable to. But um, I'll open it up to any other comments, questions, or Tim? Yeah, I, I, I want something with detail 
in the in a proposal of what's to happen with the trim on this house on all these houses um your statement of we're just going to put j channel around it which then just slide into the j channel and and leave those at that point i would think that the j channel would be even proud of the existing trim and to go on what laura said i more than likely the existing trim on around those windows is pretty poor condition given the fact that uh even a, a fairly low attempt to cover that up with nails through the face of that trim of that metal probably actually didn't help the rotted trim so i think those windows are in in rough shape behind that aluminum and that, that needs to be investigated and a decision made of how to address that and how that is to be addressed needs to be presented here, along with the possibility of siding. And I think that in the time it takes you to find out what you're gonna do with the trim, what's behind that trim, and then even have that siding that you have tested for asbestos and or lead or both I, you'd have to do both it may sway a decision that you would have maybe if you find out it's asbestos and now how much it costs to get rid of it you change your mind i, I don't know you, i don't think you have enough information to make a good decision yet that's my opinion and I am actually really happy you're before us. I'm very much with your butter that I'm happy to see work being done on these houses because like I said, I think they are great houses. I'm looking forward to having some work done on them to help improve them. I'm sure the people living in them are thinking the same thing. We're not trying to make this undoable for you, but I just, again, we don't want to make a decision and then you end up in a worse state than they are now, right? So, um, it would be something that you would have to do for us to table this, that you would have to be amenable for it. Because as it stands right now, from my understanding of how this board is kind of going, we might be looking at a denial. But if you allow us to table for you to do that research, um, you could come back and just bring that information forward to us. I don't know if you're amenable to that, but that would be something that would stop where you would come back um, under old business and we could reevaluate based on what you find out. Um, but that's... Um, completely up to you or we can move forward with um, a vote tonight as it stands it's completely in your hands on that one I can keep having the board ask questions or conversation as you think about that and we can keep moving forward but if you uh, want to table to do that research that is acceptable but if you don't have a decision now I will go to Richard because I saw his hand and just to continue on with the thought that if it is asbestos that was kind of my concern what I referenced with the other house that we had before us that just chose to paint it because that's actually encapsulating the asbestos if it is in fact asbestos simply by painting it you encapsulate it and it basically seals it in and protects it so that might be a better option of obviously it's your house you you know need to investigate this and decide what's best but that might be the better option in this situation so Potentially, maybe you get new trim <coughs> that can replace what's there and then just simply paint the existing siding. Might just one option. You know, again, it, this takes a little bit of research to make sure of what you're dealing with so that it's a good job when we're done. So, just trying to help throw some options out there. Paul and then Tim. Uh, just to echo what was said earlier, I'm definitely um, not in favor of the J channel as proposed. Um, and then I think the the trim situation needs to be addressed. And I, for the applicant's benefit, and our board members correct me if they think this is inaccurate, but the other mill housing in town that I think might serve as an example to you of what trim appropriate trim would look like are the Market Street um, properties. I think they're like 17 Market Street roughly. Um, there's three or four of them in a row there. Similar period, similar style. It's very simple trim work. It's not hi uh, highly ornate, but you can see uh, on those properties that that trim is, you know, two, three inches proud of of the clapboards. Um, I actually recall just from being a townie for a long time, 
when the prior owner went to side these, he took the HDC to court because they made him do clapboards rather than uh, vinyl, and HDC won, right? So, and he had to install clapboards, um, and they look great. <laughs> but uh, we are trying to we're trying to be reasonable, and I think most of us would be open to a vinyl option, but we just need to see the detailing to make sure that it's going to look good. This way. Yeah, 17 Market Street, the ones right across the street from Borderline. Right across from Borderline, these buildings. I'm sure you stuff across the street. They did with wood. Mm -hmm. They did with wood. I think you could, I think you could achieve something similar with thought, if you're thoughtful with vinyl. Right, but uh, we don't see that tonight. So, okay. All right, Tim. Um, have you ever read your historic survey for the properties? These things. Uh, maybe. No. Uh, so. I'll, Most people. One of the features so that we that. we love to point out is uh, the bottom of the one page where it says uh, setting integrity and significant. And maybe helping your cause is the line for integrity. It says it has fair integrity only due to the application of concrete siding, however, and the loss of trim and replacement doors. So the writer of this survey was saying that if this concrete siding was not installed and that trim was not covered up, you would have good integrity. But right now you only have fair integrity. And it goes on with the significance of part of the larger street that was built own and co-workers, the housing of the east side of Elm Street. These houses were all built between 1824. So there's a long history of them. And during one of our historic presentations, we had speakers come from, from the parks and recs. And we had some of those speakers that came. They talked about... Um, those houses, they mentioned it, that they're probably the only last remaining example of mill housing in the state. Mm -hmm. And they were very insignificant in the historic value of Summersworth, of those four homes. So they're a bit precious. Um, we'd love for you to keep them precious. And if the person that wrote this survey is correct, and it is cement siding that's there, you, and you should test it to ensure that it is. It would be very easy to remove and dispose of. And maybe underneath it, the reason why someone puts cement siding on the wood clapboards is, I have no idea why someone would do that, but you might find a little gem behind that siding if you chose to go that route. Um, I'll encourage you to test that siding to ensure that it is not asbestos. Um, and that might help a decision as well, that maybe removing it isn't such a bad idea. And even if you wanted to vinyl over the clapboards and came before us with that proposal, you're lessening the thickness of your siding. The windows would then be more proud by removing it. So I would encourage you to consider asking this board for us to table it and you to find out this information in return with that information next month and with, a, with good description and examples of what you plan on doing with the trim. So if you'd like to do that, we'd, we'd be hearing it. George. Uh, I have another concern. Um, going up the Reagan to the stop, and some of this looks like it's painted and some of it looks like it's had metal coverage over it that's fallen off. And it looks like it hasn't been painted in years. Are you uh, going to paint this, the trim, after you put the siding on? I was just going to use a, a aluminum to cover it. Well, see, that's not in here. You're not telling us that. Uh, you mean the trim, right? Yeah. 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 So that would have to be part of your application. That's part of why, like, if you're touching any of that kind of stuff, you have to put that as part of the application. Like, if you're not just painting it, you're adding aluminum, that needs to be on the application as well, and just for... Also, my other thought would be th these houses are, uh, are great examples of the row houses, and um, I talked to the original surveyor uh, of these houses 
back from the 80s when he did these. And he said, these are very important houses. And my other thought was, if you're going to put vinyl siding over this stuff, these houses are, are long and wide. Uh, the siding's going to bow with the sun hitting it right because that, there's no trees around here. That's eventually going to bow. And I could see it now going curved. Uh, so I, I would recommend what Tim was talking about, uh, or like I told you earlier, my dad uh, had taken the siding off and there was pine clapboards underneath. Uh, I think they were, it might have been something else, but there were clapboards and he had painted it and the house was absolutely gorgeous. Um, to me, that's what I would try to do, take the siding off and see what's underneath it before you go any further. So before we go through with more discussion or if I ask for someone to do a motion tonight, are you wanting to table and coming back with some of yeah, the answers? Let me, let me look into it and then we can revisit again next month. Okay, are you clear on the stuff that we're looking for for when you come back? Yeah. If you're not, Michelle definitely can help you with that with the city staff. Yeah. Um, but those will be the things that we will want. So we're going to go ahead and do a vote to table then if you, since you're amenable to that. Yes. So it would be June 26th when we would need um, the, all that information yeah. so we can see it again. All right. All right. So um, we will take a motion for tabling. Richard, we have a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to table it with if if we need a list just to, you know, detail is what's going to happen with the window trim, the roof trim, and whether you're going to remove siding, what the results are of the testing, and based on the testing, whether it's being removed or covered or what the case is in that situation. All right, sounds good. All right, do we have a second for tabling? I see a second, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All just, those opposed? Just to be clear for the record, we're tabling three applications. Correct, because yes. we already voted to handle them as one. Right. Yes, all right, so the we have tabled that and we look forward to seeing you next month. Uh, reminder to all those on the committee, please keep your packets on these three for next month, please. Because you will not get them again. You will only get added information. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, Matt Gerding and Cody Donahue is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a fence on a property located at 157 High Street. Michelle. Can you state your name for the record? <laughs> Not After great. Michelle's done. <laughs> <laughs> Applicant is proposing to install a six-foot cedar privacy fence with matching gate to replace the existing four-foot picket wooden fence. And this application is ready to be accepted as complete and move forward with review. Thank you, Michelle. All right. <laughs> Hello, Matt Gerding, uh, 157 High Street, Summersworth. Um, yes, thank you for seeing this today. Um, hopefully all the information you need is in the packet I submitted one, two, three, seven or so pages of info um, showing the current fence, what it looks like, where it currently is. Uh, it's definitely in rough shape and is needing to be repaired or replaced. Uh, we are deciding to replace it um, via butt on that side of the house, a um, parking lot, which is our neighbor's parking lot, um, and that part of the backyard that the fence is right next to. Essentially, we would just like a little bit more privacy. It's pretty much our main section of uh, backyard right there, which I'm sure you can see in kind of the overhead views of the property. We're looking to replace it with a six foot high cedar fence. Uh, that's almost like a privacy style, no uh, gaps between the wood. Um, we're gonna utilize um, cedar posts as well. And then the gate, which will be on the front section of this proposed fence, the uh, street facing section of the fence. Um, we'll essentially just utilize a fence panel and then um, create a uh, gate with a gate structure that you put behind the panel. And so it all should look the same and seamless around all sides. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. All right, thank you. And we will open it up to comments, questions, or concerns. Liz, did you have any? <laughs> No. <laughs> Richard. So this is only going on one side, not around the whole property. It just looks like from the back of the house, extending back. Yep, correct. So we'll go right from the very back corner, yep. northernly 
back corner of the house um, to about 10 feet from our property line. We wish we could go all the way, but there's a little hill almost, so we'd have to build that up to be able to match. So, no, so nothing would be in the front of the house anyway. Nothing would be in the front, yep. Fair enough. Paul. Did I miss the, how's it getting stained or painted? Um, I will leave it as uh, cedar. I've been debating whether to stain or not, but I don't think I will. I'll probably let just go with, yeah, let it weather and be regular cedar. Our neighbors on um, the southern lead side of our house um, have a cedar fence as well that they're letting weather. And so we're, we're thinking, though it's not an identical fence because theirs is a four foot high picket style, um, that at least we figured we'd try to match woods. So yeah. Any other questions, comments? Richard. I just, I know normally we really do look to have stuff painted when it's bare wood. Um, I would note that cedar is one of those unique board, wood species that is very rot resistant. Um, I know there's a Thompson's product that's clear that helps it weather and turn gray as well. I don't know if you'd consider that or just let it go naturally. I think either one would be suitable in this situation. I just want to point out that cedar is unique in that way. It is more rot resistant than most wood, and I think I'd be okay with it not being stained or painted in this situation because of the species of it. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm happy to look into that product too. I, whatever gives me longevity, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Um, I saw Paul, and then I think I saw Tim. Um, I was also just going to say, on the cedar front, it's a, a regional wood that's often left to weather, right? So it's, and you know, if I saw some other type of wood that they're like, oh, we're just going to leave it, I'd like yellow pine or something, I'd be like, yeah, no. But um, cedar's part of the New England vernacular, so good, good with me. Tim, did I see your hand at our You did. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, cedar is a, a natural preserved wood. It's one of the few that species that are actually mentioned in building codes to be allowed to be ground contact and in the weather. Uh, they are rot and insect resistant, and they do gray rather evenly. A classic example is the um, there's a little uh, well house at the in Forest Glade Cemetery that was re-roofed with cedar shakes, and everyone thought, "Oh, beautiful that brown wood looked." And I smiled and said, "Okay, but it, it's just all gray, and it it'll be there for our lifetimes. It won't be replaced again." So I'm in I'm in favor of this. I, I don't necessarily like privacy fences when they're visible from the street and that's why Somersworth has an ordinance that you can't do anything higher than four feet in the front yard to stop compartmentalization and you keep your street view and streetscapes available you're not doing that so I'm in favor of this Paul I'd like to make a motion to approve the application as presented Right. We have a motion to approve as presented. Do we have a second? We have a second by Adam. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Application passes. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. I'll tell you, a little bit of paint wouldn't have worked there for you. Right. <laughs> 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 All right, next on the agenda is we have a discussion with Brand Adkins on a proposed front porch addition on a property located at 24 Maple Street. I just want to give um, a brief reason. This is a discussion. This is not looking for an application approval or any of that. That will come later, but um, Mr. Brand, um, Mr. Brand Adkins did reach out and was having some questions, so I thought he should come to the board. Um, if you would like to just give us a little more rundown about the project, um, and I'll just have you actually be in front of the microphone so everybody at home can hear you as well. I'm Brant Atkins. Uh, <clears throat> I've lived in Summersworth for a long time, but I live in Rochester right now. Uh, 
I owned the property near the works right in the front where all the medical was done there. Um, tonight, I want to talk about 24 Maple Street. And because I was a little bit quick on the, the list, I've got a package of pictures to help me talk about what I want to do. That's perfect. We love pictures and diagrams. picture is face on to the building that's 24 Maple Street it's a duplex you can't see the unit in the back it's a very very small piece of property the back unit used to be a barn I I'm assuming it was built back in 1886 according to the to the tax map um, the back unit is uh, just two stories, rather small, but it's a standalone. And there's a little postage stamp of grass out there. And that usually goes with the back unit as their use. The front uh, unit, which is a three bedroom, has no yard, has pavement all the way up to the foundation. Um, and there's nowhere for them to really get outside that's on their own property. So what, <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, there's never been a porch uh, on this property. And I'm proposing uh, to put a porch in. And I want to talk about whether that's going to be something that could be acceptable. And I want to talk about the materials that I would like to use. And I want to talk about the type of uh, top on the porch, um, all of which, since this has never had anything done, is just my ideas. I've taken some pictures of um, the different sides to the property, uh, frontage there. And I've taken a, a picture of uh, the surrounding neighborhood and then some examples uh, of the type of porch system that I want to put on. But going back to this uh, first picture, the porch that I'm proposing is going to be in this area right here, facing the building. It'll be to the left side uh, of the staircase there. The dimensions on that porch will be seven feet from the building out toward the road and it'll be 14 feet long, which will bring it to about eight inches from this corner all the way over to here. Uh, seven feet comes out to the third tread from the top of the, uh, the landing on the brick stairs there. And it's going to be level with the landing of the stairs at the top and it'll be cantilevered about 10 inches. So the post supporting it will be uh, recessed uh, toward the building and the, the, the floor and the railing will be about 10 inches toward the road from that. And that would be when, within the seven feet distance from the face of the building. The, the neighborhood, as a mix. Uh, most of them are small porches. Uh, they've got railing systems which are primarily vinyl, uh, except for uh, this large property which is right across the street from me. And they're all wood. Uh, it's the best looking porch, I think, around. Uh, my neighbor uh, over here has columns and a porch, and I believe those are wood. Uh, the rest of the neighborhood is all vinyl. 
what I'm proposing is uh, doing everything that would be maintenance free. The railings on the stairs, the columns that go up and support uh, the roof that hangs over the, the landing at the top of the stairs, and then all the railings and the, the posts that would be on the deck, uh, on the porch itself would be vinyl. Uh, I want to use uh, architectural but structural vinyl posts, and I'll show you an example of those. So the, the railing posts would be vinyl, the railings and the balusters would all be consistent vinyl. Um, I'm using a fairly expensive quality of post, which would have metal interior and blocks that are within the vinyl, and uh, they hold up a lot better than some of the materials you can buy through Home Depot, and, and, and it's just a little cheaper and has a little flimsy and sag to it, but this will be pretty sturdy. Um, the railing, <laughs> the next pictures just show some examples of what I'm trying to achieve. It would be like this, of course, with the, the posts, um, but it would have this same look. I, I did this picture because the, the stairs here are about as wide as mine. Mine would go over to the left instead of over to the right and everything would be architectural posts and balusters. Um, next picture is just an interior to that. This, this picture here is, is going to have the look of mine except for the roof up here, and I'll get to that in just a little bit, but it's got the architectural posts on it. <laughs> on that, on that uh, porch, it faces um, primarily to the east, and the, the sun, the sun comes up. The sun comes from this direction in the morning and then it goes around the building like this. So there's very little sun that's hitting that, um, except for from 6 a.m. until maybe 9 o'clock. And then it's only getting a little bit of angular sun from this direction. So what I want to do is, is not put a roof on there because it, it, it's going to be problematic with these windows here even if I did a real shallow roof so what I thought I'd like to do that'll provide just a little bit of um, uh, sun shade is do a trellis style roof and here's some examples in the trellis system that I'm looking to do is going to be very very simple here's an elaborate system right here just to give you an idea of type of look that I want above that. And I, I gave examples, a whole bunch of them in there, so you can see just different applications of that. Um, and you can just follow through on that. Uh, the reason why I want to get, you know, an, uh, just an okay on, on using vinyl and using the trellis roof, because they don't exist. I can't find any in town. There's some in Rochester. Um, there's some down at um, the Governor's Inn. And you can find them, but they're not used very often. I don't know of any in, in Summersworth at all. Uh, I do want to have some sort of top over over the, the porch, but I'm limited uh, in, in attempting to do that primarily because of the, 
the old cedar shakes that give detail to the house and the and the where the windows are at I'd be hiding a lot of that and I don't want to um, I'm looking at the top white board that goes across the first floor windows and my my trellis system would attach to that and leave all the the, the uh, handmade cedar shakes and the detail that's in those uh, alone uh, without having to take them off or cover them up and I'm not working with a lot of height so a roof would I think really overburden the face of that building and that's basically it well I'm going to open up with saying I wish every applicant gave us the amount of information you just gave us because this is awesome. I'm understanding where you're coming from. You have good examples. I love, you know, everything you've displayed for us. So well, thank you so much for all of the great detail. Um, I'll just say my... Yeah, <laughs> obviously I'm like taking up my desk and I hardly ever do that. So I'm loving this. Um, I'll just give you my personal opinion and then I'll bring it out to the board. Um, for me, um, I think the one that I most would want you to mimic, if this is the way, I would want you to keep that arch. It's the White House with the, the gables on top, or sorry, not the gables, the little porticos, and then that it actually has the trellis work um, on it. So, because for me, I wouldn't want to lose that entryway that you have, but it doesn't sound like you're offering to get rid of that at all. You're no, just adding to I it. I want to integrate it into, I want to leave everything the same right. as much as I can and just put a porch on with a trellis roof. Right. My, and I love hearing you want to keep those cedar shakes because, like you said, they are unique. They had character. You know, there's that band right there. Um, that you're trying to be respectful to the upper windows, which doesn't give you much playroom, as you know. My biggest question would be to raise up to that level where your door is, what are you looking to do at the underneath of that deck structure? Because um, that is usually one issue with that being such a high um, basement area. Um, that would be my first question around that. Well, I'm gonna have to drop some sauna tubes in or some of the the new footers but would you want to keep it open with just um support structures or would you do like a lattice would you do um like any kind of decorative enclosure there because obviously the 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 walker walking board would be at the same level as where your entry is yes correct? so you're going to have quite a bit of depth underneath that yes so you're going to see some sauna tubes come up out of the ground and you're going to have an eight by eight post on those to build the structure um, the the post is going to have a little bit of a Y that comes out to, to give it more and then there'll be uh, an AZEC uh, fascia board that's put over so the sauna tube and the posts are going to be exposed I not really thought out what I want to do to cover that but I do want to do something I just you don't want to leave it open I don't want to leave it open okay. uh, it's going to be cantilevered out so those posts are going to be reset back in about 10 inches maybe 12 inches and I um, I have some ideas on it but I really haven't decided yet okay I'm, I'm I was going to say, based on the amount of research you've done, I feel like you will come up with a really great idea for that. I'm hoping, and I can come back in and get that approved, but I need to build the porch to put the railings on my stairs. Right. I need something to give the, the long uh, handrail that goes up the side of the stairs some support. And uh, I talked with the code enforcement officer a, a year and a half ago and and I uh, told him I was having a problem because I've got precast uh, stairs and there's only certain ways you can mount stuff to it and they recommend putting iron railings in and I didn't want to do that so I came up 
with the porch idea, which is what I had wanted to do, okay. but it also comes out and gives me the, the, the strength to hold that railing from cracking off an ear on one of my treads to, on my staircase. Okay. Um, so just quick question. I, or not question, sorry, quick statement. I wouldn't have an issue with this because you're keeping the original structure. Um, this would be, in essence, minimal destruction to the original building. So if it was ever removed, in my opinion, I think it would be okay. It would just be where the bolting for this structure would be from what it sounds like from your understanding. But I'm curious what the other board members think. Richard, I saw you first. I have to second what she said about all the detail he had pictures we can't get half of these pictures from most people so thank you for bringing you know the surrounding houses everything about this is very helpful um i, I love the idea that you're trying to save everything looking at the survey of your house it you're considered good overall integrity because the only thing that's been changed is the front steps with the ironwork and the doors so very little has been changed on this house and with all that um, cedar shake that are cut to different shapes and designs is you know exactly what makes the character of this house so the fact that you want to keep that I, I love it I'm happy to hear that um, I think the portico I think that's what it's called or trellis covering it so that you can still see this stuff is a great idea um, I kind of wonder if you'd have the headroom, if you're going to go over the top of the window, you know, even if you had to drop the floor of that deck down below the basement windows, I'd still be okay with it. I, I don't know if you need to, maybe you don't. I'm just, it, it seems kind of close on the headroom, just looking at it, but I don't have a tape measure here, so I don't know. Um, but all in all, I, I love what you're proposing here. I, I don't see any problems with it. It is tight. The headroom is part of the problem. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as underneath, if you did a lattice work, the small square, not the diamond shape, I think would be more fitting on this house. Just my take on it. But obviously, you've put a lot of thought in this, and I'm pretty sure you're going to come up with a good plan when you come back next month or the month after. So I'm actually looking forward to it. The the trellis thing is is really most popular on. Uh, Outdoor areas, you know, like they have these canvas roofed metal pole things to sh shade you and you yeah, put your picnic table under a, it or something. Usually like over, that. A over a patio. Usually over a patio, but yep. it's it, it's used to go over porches too. Yep. And, and, uh, I, I don't see a, a problem with places. it. But um, trellis, the, the roof is called a, a trellis, but you can also have. Uh, walls that are trellis and and usually you put vines and flowers in them when you do that so the reason why i was w waiting on what i was going to do on the bottom is because on this particular side right here um it would be perpendicular i may put some sort of lattice on there that will the allow me to do some vines that We'll grow up colored flowers. So. We're going to just try to have you stay in front of the mic because we are televised, so no one at home can hear you if you move away from it. <laughs> okay. But okay, so understood that you're thinking about you might end up doing like a planting on the left or. That's it, kind of like a wall, but it's it's kind of a lattice. It might even be a big lattice. It might be something like this, and then the vines grow all yeah. through that. But it would give a little privacy from people looking inside from that direction. Uh, by the way, one of my favorite comments was the fact that you weren't going to go to Home Depot to get this stuff. <laughs> Thinking outside of the big box stores is great. Oh, you pay for it. <laughs> you do, but you get a better quality. And, yeah. and that's ultimately a lot of times what we're looking for is quality stuff that's going to withstand the years and hold up. So thank you for that. Yeah. Paul? I guess I'll just echo some of the comments that have been said already. Generally okay with the porch. I think a lattice is a creative solution to... Um, the context here, or not lattice, trellis, excuse me. Um, I think my biggest concern um, is also the underside of the porch. And so how the porch transitions, I'm just going to make up some terms. So um, <laughs> bear with me. Um, I'm going to call it uh, an apron or like a transom between the 
the decking, right? And then there's the lateral structure. So that that needs to appear like I don't know some sort of tri trimmed out in some fashion, I would imagine, right? Or like yeah, exact. exact, okay, right? Yeah. And then and then that portion here. Exactly, yeah. The all, big the big the thick ball. lateral. Yeah. Well, the this big the thick lateral ball. piece. Yeah above right where the, so you've got the yeah, exactly so you got that and then under that to me and just based on what i've seen in the neighborhood there's almost always lattice or um dent like a skirt like dentals yeah, skirt. or whatever it, most yeah. people call it a skirt yeah so i would anticipate to see a skirt um on on there so you don't see the the actual piers the structure the structure that's holding it up um so that would be my hope I would just like to add to that the um, you'll want to you, you talked about cantilevering it I'm not sure why you want a cantilever but it may make it a little difficult to attach the skirting if, if the piers are set back too far agreed but my my particular property here um, my, this is the driveway the whole front of the property is a paved driveway and it goes into the next paved uh, property. So our driveways are not driveways, they're just front yard. The entire frontage is paved. And the homes used to be close to the street. So Go back to, to, get the a, light, please. to get a car to get a car in here, for in particular a truck, a pickup truck. Um, I can't lever it a little bit just so it's not t crowding and I can keep, you know, within the property line from the right of way. And so I, I wanted to cantilever it a little bit just to give it that amount of space to, you know, take a larger vehicle. And I'm just thinking of a pickup truck. So I think that's the only thing that I think for at least me, that would be the one you might have to figure out, right? Like you said, if you can't deliver it, if you don't, just understanding when you do submit your application, what exactly you want to put there, just so we have a clear idea. I'm going to put I'm a not skirt worried on about. it. Just don't know <laughs> yeah. what it's going to look like. Uh, and I was going to work with whomever does the construction. Right, and they might have ideas for you, exactly. exactly. So I think that's the only thing. And for me, I had no issue with the um, non-wood material, but I'm just before we go back out to others, but I'll go to Tim next. Thank you. Um, I'm curious that in 2020, the steps were approved by this board to have aluminum railings installed on those steps, and those were never installed. I didn't want to do aluminum railings at that time, and I told the board, and I thought it was approved to do the architectural posts that help. That According the to the data, HDC number 15 2020 certificate of appropriateness to remove and replace brick steps and aluminum railings was approved. Okay. So, anyway, the, the stairs need railings just by code, no matter what. Um, and I'm curious as to the elevation of your deck surface is potentially to be flush with the landing of your stairs. Is that what you're thinking? Yes. Will that attachment method then be on the foundation versus the house? Is Because it, it looks like to step out of the house, you step down onto the landing and your deck... Uh, Ledger won't have house to attach. It's going to be like on the foundation. I'm not following you. So the very top of your basement windows yes. is almost flush with the top of your stair landings. Right. And if your intent is to have your deck flush with the top of the landing, you're not going to be able to attach the deck to the wood structure you're going to attach to the foundation. Correct. All right. Um, just throwing that out there, if, if you're interested about all the column, and I can help the board, you know, cantilevering is a chosen method because you don't have to be pinpoint perfect with a sauna tube. You have a little 
flexibility with the beam so it's not so critical to line up and having pinpoint accuracy with a sauna tube is difficult. So cantilevering is a desirable method because it gives you some play. Uh, that said that seeing as this deck will not be part, will not serve the fr as a front entrance at all, sauna tubes aren't even required, just so you know. Um, but you could, if that's a method you want to choose to support it, that's fine. It would be called a freestanding, and then you just wouldn't use the house as one part of the support. You'd have two beams back there sitting on some sort of structure. Anyway, that's just throwing that out there for your benefit that you may need. If you don't have to use the house to hold the beam, to hold the deck up. We've, I talked about that with um, several of the people that I've talked with about getting estimates and but um, it's a small job and it's a little tricky in a bunch of different ways and the people have just evaporated and lost interest in doing yeah. it. Um, and so as long as you don't, you can attach the deck to the house and still have it a freestanding deck as long as the house, if you magically could pull away the house, the deck would stay there all by itself, freestanding. Right. So it's, I'm not saying you don't have to. You have an option. Use the use the house to hold the deck up, or, or you don't you don't have to in this case. And and I've talked with different guys about different ways to yep. do it, and I haven't. It's a better way, but it's not a requirement. It. Well, right. And I will just say I'll interject a little bit here. I think how it's built isn't necessarily unless it's hurting or hindering the design aspect. That's um, true. I was just I, worried I, about how because we're not approving tonight. I don't uh, want to get too much into the structure of how it's materials. built. Yeah. Right. Just so. consider that the the, uh, the elevation is going to be tricky, and I don't think you'll have headroom issues. I think the trellis idea is great. I think it's going to work. Um, when you first started discussing porch and some of those other pictures had. Sh uh, shingled roofs I was like oh, I'm not going to approve this but then as you got into the description with the trellis and it's just going to be a shade roof that's awesome um, and I, I really like the idea I don't know how it's going to look perfectly with the deck matching your top but and I don't know how you're going to attach railings on the other side of your steps, which you need railings on both sides. So that's still going to be a problem, but. Well, you know. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention it. <clears throat> this is just a small short area over to the right as you're facing the front of the building. And I was going to do the same thing there put the sauna tubes in they're almost side by side in order to get that and it's such a short area and it adds a considerable amount to the cost I was going to do the same thing there to support that railing and we've talked about a couple different ideas that actually might work so um, when I come in I may come in with it not only here but over here which is originally what I wanted to do and it would be exactly the same you'd have a little trellis right here and and some right here too but I don't I, think that would make a difference on my it wouldn't sway approval me I I like the idea if you could do it there but I also understand the reality of that's a very small space and I have a feeling that most of the board members are probably thinking the same thing all the yeah posts and everything it 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 it's what I had really wanted to do but the contractors are trying to talk me out of doing that right. it's just too too busy work over there there's too too much going on so um, that's still up in the air but the the decking that's going to be flush with the landing flush. okay that's going to be the is it called Trex the yeah mm -hmm. so everything's going to be maintenance free on the the deck so at the end of the day though when this is all finished you'll have railings on both sides of these stairs and balusters on the deck. Yes. 
and balusters on the railings. Yeah. Thank you. Liz. Hi. Um, at first, I, I just want to say, I hope when you come back that you'll have really good drawings because, okay, I'm biased, I'm an architect, we work in drawings, but what happens is when you make those drawings, it really helps with all of these decisions and you can see the moments where things maybe you haven't thought through yet, just to try to, even if it's a rough sketch, it'll help you think about how all the pieces meet each other. It sounds like you do that very well on your own already, but really it will help us to understand it when you bring it back. If you have some sort of rough sketches of, of what this would look like um, from a few, you know, from different angles in the plan view and, and dimensions, and we'll need all of that to understand it properly. Um, you can have a builder do that if you're not comfortable doing it. If some builders are um, and have that capability in-house. You could have an architect do it if you could find someone to do a small project, which might not be easy and probably is out of your budget. But I would say somebody has to prepare some sort of drawings to help us understand this. Um, and then I, I'm not sure I love the idea of extending it on that right hand side just because the asymmetry of the front of the house doesn't really necessarily call for it, but I wouldn't be against it. But I would ask, like, just to think, um, I don't know if you've been able to do any historic research to see if in the Summersworth Museum they have any old photos of this house. Um, it would be, I'd be curious to know if that's the original roof over the entryway. It may be that it, you know, if that's not the original roof, you may just as well do the trellis all the way across the front without this add-on at your stairs. Maybe that would simplify the, the whole thing for you. Um, um, it might be some helpful. Evidence of that. We do have a historic photo from mm -hmm. 1986, but I don't know to your point if there's anything further. Yeah, yeah. Just be curious if you could find any evidence of that. Um, it might help you with the design. Is there anybody on this committee that knows where a picture like that might be found? If you go to the um, Summersworth Museum, they have a lot of photo documentation of all lots of different streets in town, and, and you might get lucky and find it in a view. Somebody and, and staff there can help you um, when they're open. There's usually somebody there that can help show you, you know, you let them know what you're looking for. It's no guarantee that they'll have it, but it's sometimes worth looking. Um, and then the, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought a little bit there, but I'm just looking at that band above your windows, that white trim board. I'm sure you've already identified this challenge, but it's only about four or five inches high and your trellis is going to be deeper than that. So and if, if maybe if there's a way to not attach it directly to the house, that might solve that problem for you. That's, that's what's been talked about. And just to yeah. go back to the original uh, beginning of your comments. I have gone to five different architects. Yeah, it's it's a small project. Two that <laughs> show up. I've had two that have shown up and then I never hear from them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid to pay for it because I want that more than anything. I want the detail and I want the guy that's going to build it to build it the way the architect drew it. But I can't find an architect that will do it. Mm -hmm. And I've made... I've wasted a year and a half mm. trying to get several architects over there when they tell me they can get to it in four months and then I, they won't return a phone call uh, or when they do come and say they're yeah. going to get back with me with it, a proposal. It I might be better with a, a, a design builder kind of office. That's what I've, yeah. that's what I've decided to do and the, the guy that I picked ended up having a brain aneurysm oh. a month ago and <laughs> went under operation a week ago. I don't know if he's alive. Oh my goodness. So then I've gone to uh, R.A. Jet, uh, who is a military guy like I am, and he does CAD work. And he is the other guy, after this meeting, he's gonna do a drawing up with the materials that he can find and the trellis on the top you can order them kind of custom and they'll, they'll put a, a fingertip on the end of it with a couple mm -hmm. different options. Um, and when he does his CAD design, 
we're going to make the decision whether to attach it or have it go freestanding. So we've oh, good. picked around both of those options. Mm -hmm. um, he he said getting the um, maintenance free vinyl trellis top. Uh, he said it might be easier to use cedar, cut whatever we want on there. Um, so I guess that's another question I should have. If I don't do vinyl on the trellis top and use a cedar roof, I personally think it wouldn't look good. I didn't want to paint the cedar right away, but we've been talking about a wood option in case we have trouble getting the, the trellis design. Well, uh, being a historic district, usually we prefer wood. Um, but um, as you heard on one of the um, conversations with the fence, we normally want it stained or painted depending on that. Um, so it would kind of come down to, I don't think anybody on this board is going to tell you don't do wood, but right. we are amenable to other options like I AZAC. Think it would just or, look a little out of place. I mean, I kind of like If everything idea. else is white and then you leave that wood, it might look a little bit odd in my opinion. But again, I think it depends on how you treat it or what you do with it, right? So Cedar holds paint very, very well. Yeah. Paul? Just in the interest of time, um, I, I'm looking to summarize the notes that we have given. Um, so I've heard giving uh, needs an apron of some sort, trellis not attached to building. What else was there that people are, were looking to provide direction on? I think he was just looking for direction on are the proposed materials okay with our board? I think exactly. I've overheard most okay. of us are Preferred amenable wood, to everything you've proposed. Yep. Um, is there any questions that came up tonight, kind of to Paul's point, like that you're still questioning that? that Because it sounds like most of us are in favor of what you're proposing at this moment. So when I get the drawing, I'm going to come back in anyway yes. and, and I'm going to tell you what we decided to do whether to attach the trellis or not attach it or have it freestanding or not freestanding I don't think that matters one way or the other because it's going to still look about the same um, but are there any other last comments before we let the applicant go tonight about George yeah I just want to say that uh, you did a beautiful job painting this so it, it yeah. really looks great Thank you. It looks fantastic. I love that. Took me a whole summer and a half. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Before you walk off, I don't know if you've got in, uh, we've referred to the survey for your house. Um, I have a copy if you'd like oh, it. Sure. But um, Richard, did you have another? Yeah, I just, I wanted to say, you know, obviously we're not making a decision tonight. This really, I think, would be best called a conceptual review like mm -hmm. we had tried to do. I didn't see it worded that way on here, but. I, I'm glad to see someone took the advantage of this, and I, I think we're going to have a better product having an initial discussion like this. He knows what to expect, what our concerns are, and I, I look forward to this being presented to us. All right. But do, um, I think those are our overall opinions that we all are in favor of what you have, but we just have a few other questions that when you come back, we'll hopefully have answers to. Okay, great. All right. Thank but you very thank much. You. All right, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is workshop business. Uh, Tim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the historic plaque program workshop met tonight just prior to this meeting. Um, the discussion revolved around two different items realistically. One was the fact the size of the sign of the plaque. Uh, we assumed at first would be about 12 by 12 when in fact the material will still be roughly that dimension. However, due to the constraints of the equipment to router in the, the particular lettering, the lettering of that nature would be restricted to about a nine by nine area. And we also discussed about different homes that we would consider. Uh, and we decided that we would do one in these commercial, in the commercial, space in the district, one home inside the district, and one home outside the district. And we concluded at about 10 minutes of 7. Thank you, Tim. Any other comments, questions, or workshop? Paul. Just because I unfortunately missed the workshop, what was the home, what were the 
Can we mention which were selected? Cannot. Not at this time yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Obviously, you heard about one tonight, but yes. Surprise. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> we need to talk to him first. All right. Any other workshop or um, business or communications? If not, we'll move on to miscellaneous. Any miscellaneous tonight? I always have miscellaneous. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, a few meetings ago, we spoke about, uh, it was actually prior to the borderline uh, sign application that came in that I was pointed out that lighting was installed on borderline that didn't receive permits or come before us for it. It certainly doesn't meet zoning regulations for uh, light pollution and they're like train lights they shine so bright there it, it can you fill us in and any mo any movement towards whatever has happened with those those light beams you can see them like up pine hill road in berwick it's they're bright i sent that to staff to look into you did All right so yeah this I don't think, you know, they came here to put up some other lights, very artistically designed ones, but they've got headlights on the side of that building. Um, also, I noticed that on the, there's a fairly large sign that's on Constitutional Way, f facing Constitutional Way, that's advising people who use the parking lot behind those buildings on uh, High Street, that it's a private lot. Um, it's pounded in with some fence posts, and it's fairly big. And it looks like it's actually been there for a little bit of time, but I only seem to have just noticed it because I don't really go through Constitutional Way very often. Um, and I'm not sure even if that piece of land it's on is in our district, but it's right on the corner of High and Constitutional. So I think it is, and it's a fairly large sign. It's about three by five. Um, pounded in with, uh, you know, like metal fence posts and facing constitutional way. It's professionally constructed, but it's advising anyone using that parking lot that it's private parking lot. And I wasn't sure if is that meets some sort of exemption where it would meet a minimal impact. It wasn't read on a minimal impact report that I recall. Um, maybe it did, and I, ju I just don't know the status of what the, that property what took place with it. I think that's Angie Reddy's property, if I recall. Um, and that's all the miscellaneous questions I have for the district. All right. Any other communication miscellaneous? George, I see you ready. Um, yeah. I think you know what I'm going to ask. Oh, Corner of uh, Grand and uh, Grove, Lydia's House of Hope, the top floor. The trim. Okay. Nothing. Well, Michelle hasn't been here, but I know oh. it was I've asked. asked staff to okay. look into that. So. I just wondered how they were doing it. There are complaint forms in our office, and you guys are welcome to come in and file a complaint form. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Any other, Thank George? You. Nah, I'm good. All right. Thank you. Richard. Any update on um staff being able to do minutes sorry uh last month we did have a discussion uh about possibly having uh city staff do the minutes for our meetings and uh, we were looking for hopefully that there was a conclusion to that yes staff will be working on the mini meeting minutes okay moving forward for clarification does that mean tonight's which so just so yes, someone's off tonight's the as well perfect thank you thank you Awesome. Applause. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Staff does a lot already, so thank you very much for taking that on. Very much appreciated. All right. Any other communication or miscellaneous tonight? All right. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a second. We have a couple seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>